Now this stump here uh, demonstrates again that the propensity of these trees to fall from the mining of wood borers. And if we look closely at the stump, we see considerable mining by the wood borers. And, and uh, you can see the same here. And there are exit holes from where beetles were exiting. So that caused this tree to fall. Now Russ Mitchell, who was an entomologist for the Forest Service, did some research during the outbreak of the 1980s. And what his research showed was that within 13 years of an outbreak, 90% of the trees had fallen. As we said, this outbreak began in about 2008. And here we are in 2020. And if we look around this stand, we find that well over 90% of the trees are in fact on the ground. Now, down here we can see more of the gallery evidence and get an example of the density of beetles that can actually inhabit a tree. So on this portion of the log here, we see it's highly weathered and we've lost a lot of the, the color from under the bark, but we still see these long linear striations or galleries. And some of them have a nice bend at the bottom, such as this one. Others do not, but look at the density of galleries. And there is virtually no square inch of this tree that is not penetrated at some point by beetle galleries. Now, another characteristic of this tree that made it particularly attractive to beetles is its large size. So when we look at this stand, there are a number of characteristics that make this stand particularly vulnerable. And behind me here, you can see the density of trees that have survived the outbreak. Now, these are young trees. Remember that the biology of the mountain pine beetles suggests that trees under four inches in diameter are not vulnerable. So we see a huge number of trees less than four inches in diameter here. And we see a few overstory trees that have survived. This is what has survived the beetle outbreak. So if you think back to stand all these trees up and make this stand green as it would have been in 2008, what the density of trees must have been like. So here are the characteristics that make this stand extremely vulnerable. High density of host species. And if you walk through this stand, there are no other species besides lodgepole in this immediate area. There are a few white fir a mile or so down the road, further up the road, but for whatever reason, this area here is pure lodgepole pine extremely high density of host, and then a significant number of large trees, particularly trees over 10 inches in diameter, which seem especially hard hit by the beetle. And if we look through the stand in the overstory, we see a fair number of trees that have survived. And so even in a bad outbreak, there are large trees that survive. Why might this be? Why might some trees survive? First, we look at the size of the trees that did die and we find that the largest trees in the stand did in fact die. When we look at the trees that survived, they tend to be the middle age classes, uh, excluding of course the smaller trees that are under four inches. Now these middle age class trees survived the beetle attack not because they weren't preferred food by the beetle, but because as the big trees got killed, that freed sunlight and that freed water to improve the vigor of the remaining trees. So in a very important point in beetle management, particularly mountain pine beetle is, vigor ahead of the outbreak will help trees survive. Trees that are killed during an outbreak provide more resources for those that remain. Thinning can do the same thing. Thinning does not work very well during an outbreak. If you're simply going in and removing trees 
uh, while the outbreak is going on, it may have a small effect, but not nearly as good a protective effect as thinning those stands ahead of the beetle outbreak.